Well, welcome to my, <laughs> if you ever come into my office, I have this little couch in the back. And usually, despite my wife's constant finger pointing at me to clean my office up. <laughs> I've always got something going on. I have just, with the help of Chris Brunhaver, rebuilt the Octave computer that goes out into the field with us. Look at this little beauty. This guy oh, is small. It's a very powerful computer, but it's very small. And when we go out on the road, I gotta lug all this stuff around. So I've been working really hard to try and narrow it down, to try and make it smaller. Now, this isn't the same as what we would have at the actual studio. At the studio itself, it's about, oh, three or four times this size. It doesn't matter because it's sitting on the floor. This can do 16 channels of DSD-256, which is, at, at the studio we can do 32 channels. Actually, we can do almost 40-something. but we rarely ever do. So 16 channels out in the field of DSD-256. Kind of cool. And then this is the the Anubis, and, which is named after an Egyptian god. And this is the monitoring system. It's a little uh, D to A converter inside of this that can take that DSD-256 and put it to my cool AudioQuest headphones. And this is how I monitor everything when we do live recordings. All right. We are here to answer questions today, and this one comes from Koa in California. Hi, Paul. Hey, Koa. What are your thoughts on the room correction features offered on a few devices out there, like the Weem Ultra, the Mini DSP? Does it work well enough that we no longer need to worry about room treatment? Well, uh, yes and no. Okay. Couple of things about that. I have never been a huge fan of active room correction for loudspeaker systems when we're dealing with a two channel stereo system that we want to say is high end. Couple reasons for that. And, and I'm gonna have to add some caveats here. Part of my caveat is when it comes to the low frequencies, absolutely, DSP is without a doubt great, okay? but couple of things to consider. If you DSP your system, if you do room, active room correction for your system, you by default have gone digital 100% up through all the frequencies. Now if you're into vinyl, that may not sit so well with you, right? Because you've gone to all this trouble to have your cool turntable, your phono preamplifier, everything is analog, and then it gets converted in an A to D converter and futzed with and then reconverted through a D to A converter back into analog just so that you don't have to pay attention to the room. And for analog folks, I think that is, I'm going to say an insult, um, but it isn't because, you know, it really depends on what you're into. Look, a lot of people out there aren't as crazy as most of us audiophiles are. I mean, we are nuts, right? I mean, we go to great lengths to try and extract every ounce that we can out of it. And, you know, a number of people that I talk to uh, look at it and go, you know, if you guys weren't so doggone crazy, if I could just have 80% of what you guys have, but in a simple form, I'd buy it in a heartbeat. But all those wires and boxes and speaker cabinets and all of that, nah, not for me. So, you know, and I've talked about it before, one of my long-term goals is to build a simple system that people can just plug in and get 80% of what we get here at PS Audio. And that last 20% is really hard and it takes a lot of stuff. But for many of us, it is the magic that makes it happen. So, okay, uh, what else were we talking Oh, yeah, all right, DSP. So a couple things to think about with DSP. And I'm always an advocate of 
getting the room right. It's worth it to take the time to do what you can to your room. Here's why, especially in the base. We can't really make up for nulls in the base. So when you look at the bottom end, at any frequency really, but let's focus on the bottom end. If you're going along and all of a sudden there's a big suck out because of the room or because of the way you've placed your woofers, the system setup that you have, I don't care how much energy you put into it using DSP, big powerful amplifiers, you're not gonna add much more. So you really can't fix the valleys. Now you can tame the peaks, that's easy. Zoop, down she goes, piece of cake. But fixing those valleys, good luck. That requires you to move you or your subwoofer or whatever it is that's making the bass to a point that is better for the room. So you can do some things with DSP. You can't do everything. And as far as the upper frequencies are concerned, just depends on what you want. Me, not going there, not going there. I don't want to have anything to do with it because I can get sound that is to die for by simply following great setup instructions and room tuning and all of that. And to me, to my ear, that works so much better than trying to fix it with some kind of DSP in the upper frequencies. So I know that rubs a lot of people the wrong way. <laughs> all right. <laughs> What, me ever saying something that rubs people the wrong way? God help us. <laughs> All right, take it easy. Bye.